2021. Hey. Welcome to the um, joint board workshop between Western Lane Fire and EMS Authority, Sausalito Valley Fire and Rescue, Western Lane Ambulance District. So we're just going to do a quick um, roll call just to verify if, if we do or do not have quorums. No decisions can be made tonight, so it doesn't matter, but I think it does matter for the record. So Dina, if you could do a roll call. Certainly. Uh, SBFR directors, Mendolia, Heppel, Burns. Yes. Polisi. Yes. Spade. Western Lane Ambulance directors, Russell. Here. Murphy. Here. Holbrook. Bus. Webb. Here. Wolfia Directors Polisi. Yes. Webb. Here. Spade and Murphy. Here. Okay. So we have quorums for Wish Lane Ambulance District and Wish Lane Fire and Ambulance Authority, and not yet for up. Oh, here comes our okay. quorum for SPFR. Yay. <laughs> Okay, as soon as Tim gets in here, we can start. Is he cutting? Where? Where'd he go? He's, he's connecting. Oh, okay. There he is. Hey, Tim. Hello. Okay, we got another citizen that wants in. We'll give him a second. Okay, so what we're trying to accomplish tonight let me share my screen. Oops. There we go. Okay. So can everybody see my title slide? Not yet. Here it comes. Yep. It's think okay, good. So what we're trying to accomplish tonight, uh, ideally we get a consensus from the boards. Yeah, we, we're not making any decisions tonight, you can't. Um, and to be honest, we're as tired talking about this as you are probably hearing about it, but uh, we've reached a point where we feel a decision uh, needs to be made, can be made with the information you, you've gotten, um, but we want, absolutely want you to have, or to make uh, an educated decision. So we'll give you as much information as you, as you would like. And you know, last year I pinpointed December 2021 as that would be a key decision point for us. And I'll show the timeline again. Um, but a few of the directors, I think the majority wanted to have a workshop to, to maybe get a little bit more background on this situation. And that's fine. Um, so essentially this, this presentation is a few months early than what we had planned, but uh, that's fine too. We, I mean, we can do it anytime uh, directors want to see this. Uh, nothing you'll see tonight really is new. It's been presented many times. Uh, I've tried a diff little different format uh, tonight, so we'll see if that, if that helps. Um, I did send the director some questions to ponder about this in, in a, a SWOC format, strength, weakness, opportunities, challenge, concerns type of format. And I think at the very least tonight, uh, we'd really like to hear what your, are your concerns about a merger. And, uh, and then at the end, we'll have that opportunity for you to discuss, to bring up any concerns you might have. Of course, you can ask questions at any time. Um, and then for those directors not here tonight, I've reached out to them, offered to sit down, um, watch the, this presentation with them. That would be fine. Or you know, they can watch it and ask questions. But uh, we absolutely want you to be educated as possible. So tonight we're gonna to talk about merger consolidation and there's a difference and we'll talk about what that difference is. Expansion, we've tried some new terms, expansion, 
Um, and I, I think my favorite is streamlining. Thank you, Cindy. She came up with streamlining. I think that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make a more effective emergency response service or, or provide a more effective emergency response service in Western Lane County. And, you know, and there's always the option, we can go back to, to how it used to be, if that's the desire of the board. Um, we, can, we can separate the districts. So agenda tonight, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about um, just history, how we got here, all the discussions that have gone on before us. Um, just briefly, talk to legal review, what's, what does the law say about merger and consolidations? And there's quite a bit on that. Um, so I'm just gonna, verbally tell you about the, the squawk strength weakness opportunity challenge analysis we did with uh, our staff, employees and volunteers. And that's about a year ago, um, but um, tell you how they feel about all this. Um, go over some, some of the phone poll data, which we did because we were interested to see how, how our citizens felt about a possible murder as well as how they felt about the district in general. Matt's going to say a few words about operations, talk about um, how uh, after an operations expansion, after we, if we moved uh, all operations to one entity, how that would make his life easier. Um, and then uh, Adina's going to do the same with, with financial aspects of a merger as well as with uh, HR. Then we'll, we'll give you a staff recommendations and talk a little bit about that and then open it up for, for further discussions um, by, the, by the directors. So historical review, and I've got this two, two um, sets of slides to talk about you know, how we got here. So it'd be a little bit different format and I'll repeat it a little bit. So I, I won't spend a lot of detail on any of them, but um, some of the early, earliest data that I can find is that um, there was actually a consolidation work group in, in 2006. And I think Director Webb just started as a director. He was just the newbie, I think, around that time. And, and he does remember this. But this was, this was between Western Lane Ambulance District and the Rural Fire Protection District. This was before the city merged with the Rural Fire Protection District. So that was Buchanan, Henry Hamp, um, Bob Snedden, and Steve Olnick that uh, made up and, and their purpose was to initiate primary stage of a functional operation of emergency services between Western Lane Ambulance District and Sysla Valley Fire and Rescue. Again, that was the Rural Fire Protection District. Um, and then I think, you know, I talked a little bit to Director Webb about this. I mean, he's, he's our historian, uh, whether he wants to be or not for, for all this, but the, um, he felt that there was some personality conflicts in that. And then that's why it didn't go, go uh, very far. And, Really, if you ever look at other mergers, um, especially in fire departments and, and as well as EMS um, uh, departments, the personalities, and maybe with any kind of merger from entities, it's, uh, personalities always seem to play the biggest role. And I know in Colorado, whenever we talked about, we'd always talked about having a county fire department. And it was, you know, with 30 fire departments, it was always a debate, well, who gets to run the county fire department? And each of the 30 wanted to run it. So it was all, all ego-based, I think, rather than what's the best decision for the citizen. But uh, then uh, go to the strategic plan, uh, 2015, there's comments about, you know, working um, side by side, um, shared services approach. And then the districts for, are assigned an IGA. This was the first IGA. At this point, Western Lane Ambulance District had been without a director for a couple of years. Um, they approached SVFR uh, about sharing uh, administrative services at the, the fire chief level and HR manager, finance uh, manager levels. And that was signed in 2017. And then in 2019, a uh, uh, second IGA was signed uh, and that formed Western Lane Fire and EMS Authority. And that moved all the admin office or all admin personnel uh, to the authority for both districts. And that is, and we, we re remember what that was for. That was to give equal um, say into the management uh, of each agency. And then uh, more, more recently, there was an integration committee formed in 2021. And from the charter, the purpose of the committee is to develop, review, and measure the effectiveness, effectiveness of efforts taken to merge operations between SVFR and Western Lane Ambulance District and to make recommendations for improving this process. So I think throughout this time, there's been a move towards um, 
where we think we should be headed, either a merger, a consolidation, a streamlining, whatever you want to call it, or or should we go back to to how it used to be? But I think it's I think we've reached a point where um, we can or the directors can make a decision. So again, in just um, graphical form, uh, separate entities for for many years. So Western Lane Ambulance District um, had their own ops. Um, division, their own admin division, as did uh, SCFR. Uh, Western Lane Ambulance District formed in 1976. And I think that's, it was um, in the hospital before then, and then it became a health district. Uh, SCFR, so uh, the Rural Fire Protection District formed in 1949, uh, merged with the city to form SCFR, Cypsel Valley Fire and Rescue, as we know it today, um, in 2010. And of course, we had that 2006 discussion between the, the entities. And I think, you know, probably merging with the city was of more importance to the Rural Fire Protection District than, than merging with Western Lane at the time, which, which made sense. And that was probably the right way to go. And then in August of 2017, SCFR is um, providing admin services to Western Lane. October 2019, and this is a couple months after I arrived, uh, well, FIA was formed and provide admin services to both districts. And then what we've proposed to the board uh, several times is that, you know, in July of 2022, that both admin and ops move, be part of well, FIA, and then that's provided for both agencies. Western Lane Ambulance District would still exist, uh, SVFR would still exist. They still exist as separate taxing districts. Uh, it's just that they would expect Wealthia to provide all services to the citizens in our service areas. And then in the future, and it's tough to put a date, that's why it just says in the future, um, would Wealthia be the, the remaining district that survives? Um, and then we wouldn't need um, SVFR and Western Lane at that time. And there's a lot of legal things that have to, you have to go through, of course, and, and we would do all that. But um, I think that's the ultimate goal um, that we could, or the path we could go down. But I just wanted to briefly bring up this up. I mean, we're not inventing anything new here. Um, fire departments, fire-based EMS is probably the most common model in the, in the U.S., and here, this is, this is one table I got from National Association of EMTs. Um, your, your typical fire department with EMS trained personnel, 40%. Um, some fire departments have separate EMS personnel. Uh, FDNY is a good example. That's about 9%. So about half of uh, EMS in the country is provided, is fire-based. And so it's, it's, it's a very common model. It's, it's, it's a model that's most cost-effective, at least in my mind. We have fire department. You absolutely have to have a fire department. Um, but we have less fires. So um, the thought many years ago, and this was in the 70s, was, well, fire departments have stations spread throughout the area. Let's have them start doing EMS as well, 60s and 70s. And uh, I think that's why we have such a high number of fire departments that do EMS. It's just the most cost-effective use of, of resources. And then you have government or third services. So Western Lane ambulances right now, you have privates, hospital-based service. Um, Western Lane ambulance used to be a uh, hospital-based service. Uh, of course, Lower Umpqua, I think the south of us is, is, is out of the hospital as well. So a lot of different ways to provide uh, EMS service to your citizens, but certainly the most common would be uh, fire-based EMS. So we're gonna talk a, a little bit about, or just one slide, what is a merger or consolidation? And that's Director Spade, that was his, his main question is, what is a merger and consolidation? What's the difference? So I've got a really brief slide and there's a slight difference. We'll talk about tax zones, another legal thing that we would have to go through if we go down the merger pathway. And then I just listed some of the ORS uh, laws in the state of Oregon that apply to mergers and consolidations. It's quite extensive. Um, the state has a very detailed list of what you have to do before you can merge districts or consolidate districts. Uh, it's very clear. Um, they answer all your questions. Say so you must go down this path. You must get citizen approval at this point. So it's very clear. Um, and so th there's, a, there's a nice path that we would follow if the board decides to go that path. 
So merger and consolidation, and there's essentially you end up at the same point, um, but there's a little different is, is how you get there. So with a merger, you have uh, one or more districts merging into another district and you have one surviving district. So if we were to do something like that, it could be, um, so Western Lane Ambulance District could merge into uh, Sausalito Valley Fire and Rescue. Um, I believe they could merge into, both districts could merge into Welfia. That's one of those legal things we'd have to clear up and make sure that we could do that. I think you could. Now, interesting, Western Lane Ambulance District cannot be the surviving district. So SEFR could not merge into Western Lane Ambulance District and, and then disappear. Because a health district can only provide um, EMS services, while a fire district can provide fire or and or EMS services. So um, if we went down that path, but I think you know if we, if we went down that path, it'd be to Welfia. So um, both of the districts would go away. Um, consolidation is that uh, two or more districts consolidate into a new district. So you have a single new district at the end. And I think that's possibly the, what we would do with if we um, consolidated SVFR and, and WLAD into Welfia. Again, it's, it's spelled out very clearly in state statute. Um, many, many districts in Oregon have done this. Um, closest to us, Lane Fire Authority, of course, has done it. Um, Goshen, Pleasant Hill have done it. Many other districts in Oregon. So there's a lot of expertise out there. There's a lot of attorneys that have done this. Um, a lot of attorneys that we work with have done this. So um, I think we have, uh, we'll have good advice on the legal side to do this. The other thing I want to talk about, I know it has some questions. So we have two taxing districts and how, how does that um, work if you were to have a merger? Again, that's pretty simple. You would form tax zones. And so a district would have to decide if they're providing different services to different areas of their district, they can have different tax rates. So in our case, we would have two tax zones. One would be for ALS transport services, and that would be contiguous with the existing Western Lane Ambulance District boundary. And then we'd have tax zone two for fire suppression services, which would be the same as what's currently in place for Sisal Valley Fire and Rescue. So the way I see it is that, um, so current uh, property tax bill, you see a bill for Western Lane Ambulance, you see um, property tax for SVFR. So if you um, lived in SVFR's district, you would see one line be for Western Lane Fire and EMS Authority. And I'll show you some numbers. It would be for the same amount you're paying now, it would just be added up into one. So tax, hopefully you can see those, those numbers. Tax zone one would be the 77 cents, which is what citizens now pay for ALS transport. Uh, the permit levy at 30, 30, almost 32, and then the local option levy at 45 cents. Uh, zone two, uh, so citizens within SVFR's boundary right now, they pay for ALS transport services at 77 cents. And then we also have a permanent levy at $1.54. So a total of $2.31, uh, essentially. Um, that's what people pay now. That's what um, we propose they would pay after if we did go to a merger. And we'll talk about the board can set whatever rate they want or propose it to the citizens, whatever rate they want, the citizens would have to approve it. Um, but certainly one option would be to say, you'll pay what, you, what you're paying now, there won't be any difference. Again, graphical, that's Western Lane Ambulance District area. So everybody in that area, and it's not all of, of Lane County. So to the North, we don't go all the way to the Lincoln County border. Um, let me get my laser pointer here. Right up in here, this is um, South Lincoln um, Ambulance District. I think it's Benton County has a little slice up here and Lane Fire Authority over here. So this is our ASA Ambulance Service Area. Everybody in this zone pays 77 cents for ALS transport. So you have Mapleton there, Swiss Home Deadwood, and then it goes on up river as well as all these other areas. Now it's interesting when you look at fire protection district, and I wish I had an identical map, uh, but it's a little bit different, but the, I tried to make it the same size 
So we have within the Western Lane Ambulance District, and again, it doesn't go all the way to the north here, um, cuts off about right here. You have three fire protection districts. You have SCFR, Mapleton, and then Swiss Home Deadwood. So those people in SVFR's boundary, which most people live in Florence, but there's also some in Dune City and then outside, would pay um, for fire protection um, services from um, Welfia, if that was the surviving entity, at the same rate they pay now. Uh, Mapleton um, citizens would pay 70, 75 cents for um, ALS transport services, and then they would pay, it's $1.38 that we'd pay to their fire department for fire protection services, just as they do now. So this home is a little bit higher there at $2.14, and then their citizen also pays 70 cents. So um, very easy to do that legally. Uh, there wouldn't be any change in um, services offered to anybody in this area. Um, they would still get fire protection services from their fire departments. And then these gray areas, they have no assigned fire protection services uh, other than somewhat from ODF, uh, maybe Department of Forestry, um, but we have no legal option obligation to provide them services. Although we would, we would respond certainly if there was words an issue. So any questions on tax zones? I can't see everybody, so um, Dina, watch for me there. I don't see any hands up. Awesome. So we did, like I said, we did a SWAC, this was about a year ago, asked our employees and volunteers from both sides, Western Lane and SVFR, you know, what, what were their, what did they think a strength of a merger was? What did they think uh, the weaknesses, the opportunities, the challenges or concerns? And I went over that data with, with the directors before. Um, in general, uh, very supportive. Um, we've had a um, letter from the 851, our, our lo local 851, the union. 100% um, in support uh, of, of merger, so that was nice to see. Uh, but in general, very supportive. They did have some concerns. They want to know what's the plan. Um, and that, that was a great question, and, and we, we realized that's a concern. Um, then we have to tell them, well, the directors have to agree to what the plan is before we tell you. And I think that's important that, that um, they realize the directors set the direction of their respective districts. And and um, we just, we go down that path that they've set for us. And that, but I, so I'm not gonna go over, there's four pages of, of when we talked or captured all their responses. But in general, it's very positive. Um, there were just um, some of the negatives, maybe loss of identity, uh, Western Lane Ambulance District and SVFAR, they have very strong identities as EMS or fire agencies respectively. And I, I don't think we would lose that uh, I wouldn't want to lose that, I should say. I think we would continue um, having a very strong EMS uh, presence. We would still do, you know, give away bike helmets. Uh, at SVFR, we still have a very strong fire prevention uh, program. Uh, so I don't think we would lose that identity, but it would certainly be more of a combined identity um, if we did that. So we did a phone poll data. And the reason we, we um, requested a, a phone poll was that that, was, that came out of the integration committee, really. It was a question of, well, if we go down this merger pathway, how do the citizens feel about that? And that, I think that was a valid question. Um, so we hired a firm, National uh, Nelson Research, um, through Public Affairs Council to set up a phone poll for us. And this was done in June, I think the week of June 7th. And I just picked uh, some, of, some of the answers. Um, those have all the questions and answers. You've seen those or should have seen those. Uh, if you haven't, let me know. I'll, I'll be happy to email them to you. They're on our website as well, uh, both, both Western Lane and SFR West, uh, websites. So some of the one, the one I thought was really interesting is, are you aware that we have two separate districts providing emergency services in Western Lane County? It was split exactly down the middle. Half, half knew we did and half um, uh, did not know that. And I think you know, when you look at that standard model, fire-based EMS, and especially if you have somebody moving, you know, from, from elsewhere and moving to Florence, they're probably used to fire-based EMS, and that's what they're, they're, the model they're used to seeing. So, yeah, it's not surprising. I, I am sort of surprised that it was split down the middle. 
Um, then we asked, you know, several different ways, uh, talking about uh, a, mer a merger between the, the two entities. And um, so here's an election we're held today. Would you favor or oppose merging Western Lane Ambulance Sister? Um, at no additional cost to, to property taxpayers. You see that theme through there. Um, we really feel that there would be no additional cost to taxpayers. Rates would stay the same. Again, that's up to the directors to propose to the citizens what the rate would be. But um, um, as you can see, if there was no additional cost to citizens, uh, very much in favor. So strongly favor and somewhat favor at 77%, which is, which is excellent. Um, oppose and, and strongly oppose, 6.5%. Um, again, which is typically what we see, 5 to 6% are, are opposed. Um, which which is not bad when, when you consider uh, typically I think everything anything over 60 percent in an election uh, is considered a landslide in a lot of cases. Uh, do you believe a merger hey, here was an interesting question do you believe a merger between Western Lane Ambulance Sister and SCFR would cause the cost of providing ambulance and fire service to increase decrease or remain the same and um, 16 and a half percent thought they would increase um, and then 52, almost 54% thought they'd remain the same or decrease. So I think that's, I think we're getting the message out that, that we would look to streamline operations. We would look at sharing resources. So um, while I would not say that that costs would decrease, I absolutely feel that that costs would not increase. They would remain the same or, or decrease. Uh, another, you know, just to ask the, the um, question in a different form, um, if you knew merging would not impact the level of existing uh, services, uh, would you be in favor? 79%, yes. Uh, if you knew a merger would allow the districts to combine operations and lower operating costs, would you favor or oppose? 84% would favor. Uh, if you knew a merger would not increase your existing property tax rates, 85 and a half would, would be in favor. Uh, and then we put in a question, uh, do you, this was a, a statement they had to agree or disagree with. And the statement was, I oppose a merger. We would save more money if we did away with public emergency medical services and hire a private entity to provide these. So hire a for-profit agency. 79% um, disagreed with that statement. Again, which is, I think, what we hear from our citizens. So just to summarize, uh, depending on how the question was asked, we have 77 to 80%, 86% of respondents favor or in favor of a merger. And I think that's what we were trying to get at. So how do our citizens feel about this? And then 79% were against privatization of our ambulance service or going with a for-profit um, entity. So that's just some of the background. And now I wanted to, um, really the, the people that this impacts the most, and that's a blanket statement. Um, I don't think our citizens are gonna, would see a difference. Um, I don't think our, our employees would see some differences. I think they'd have more opportunities, uh, but really it's, it's Matt and Dina that are impacted the most. I've asked Matt to do two jobs, two complete jobs. I've asked Dina to do, well, she was doing two jobs when she started, so now really it's four jobs. Um, and they've done it very well, but, but the stress on them is I can, I can see that. Um, so that's something that I'm really trying, I think we need to fix is that if we're not going down the merger path, pathway, then, then I need to hire some people to, to take that load off of running two agencies for them. So I wanted, uh, Matt, just to, uh, just to give a, a few few comments on how his life would be better if, if we had a merger from an operation standpoint, maybe how that would look. I've showed you staffing models before, so hopefully you remember that. But uh, Matt, can you just say a few words about operations? Yeah, <clears throat> so I think a better way of maybe articulating this so the board can understand is when you talk about EMS fire response right now, we're doing it together already. Fire is going out on medical calls and helping EMS, and it's seamless. And then you, you flip it around. Now EMS is going out on fire calls and helping pull hydrants, do stuff that's you know within their limits and not in the danger zone. 
and this all goes back to the in-house training we've been doing over the last year and a half. So right now we're seamlessly doing it, but that's not the difficult part of it. The difficult part is, is how do we manage two different, two different districts, two different ways versus one district, one way. Um, when I do staffing and I do the scheduling, I have to do scheduling two different ways. And it takes me about six hours just to do a simple schedule of, well, now it'll be 25 full-time employees roughly. And it really should be one and done. It could be done within, within an hour if, if we're all under what's Wolf, Wolfia. That is just a high broad level of it. And then we talk about purchasing, you know, we have different vendors that we purchase from in operations. Western Lane Purchase does their vehicles one way through one mechanic, SciSaw does it another way and really streamlining operations all within one would make it e a lot more easier where I'm not trying to, okay, I'm thinking about Western Lane. So I got to go down this pathway, make sure that we're getting that correct. Or I'm thinking about SciSaw Fire. I got to think about this direction. And Dina, when she talks about finances, her headache is a heck of a lot more than mine because she's talking about three different budgets, sometimes four, and she has to think the same direction. And where Chief says, you know, we're worn out and stressed. I mean, absolutely. I mean, I've been asked to do a job for 18 months. It was 200% normal than what I was doing 18 months ago. I'm not whining about it. I'm going to step up and do it because that's what I was hired to do. But yeah, I am definitely getting fatigued with it. So I think when we look at this, we're already doing it operationally. We just don't have the permission to continue forward and do what we need to do. And I'd be happy to answer any questions about operations. I know this is just a really short overview, but again, Chief has already hit most of the parts to it. I think Director Polisi has his hand up. Please. Yes, hi, good evening, everybody. Uh, Chief House, I, I have a question for you. On that, would a shift commander, one per each shift, alleviate this workload issue for you where you could then disseminate what needs to be done for the three shifts in each one of those commanders handles both the EMS and fire suppression aspect? You bring up a great question. What would Chief and I have been talking about is if we were to go forward with this restructuring and organizing. So yeah, uh, whether it be a battalion chief or a you know, a battalion captain would be managing, you know, and assisting me with the day-to-day -day workload and operations at that level <clears throat> is one way of looking at it. Because right now I'm managing the, you know, the day-to-day -day operations with a lieutenant and a captain, which is, th that's the easiest part of my job is managing the day-to-day -day operations. But then you have the other work underneath operations, which is vehicles, maintenance, building, everything that goes to make us run, float, and operate at a high level, training, Okay, well then in lieu of that, could it be a 40 hour position being a, a, an admin captain that handles all of that um, behind the scenes uh, workload? Well, absolutely, it's just a matter of how we structure it. And I, thought, I also liked your question because this also brings up something that Chief, myself and Dina, we're looking at two to five years and we're, we're done, we're retiring, moving on, right. unless you know something happens in the meantime. So then what you're bringing up is perfectly what we're looking at, it's a session developed yep. develop within our districts so somebody can take over. I, I have 20 years of this district. I know this district inside and out, both fire and EMS, but that's just the advantage of me being here and knowing it. Correct. And that's what you want, secession. You want to develop within as well as, you know, maybe bring people from outside into your district. I agree. I, I couldn't agree more. So in that, uh, Chief, have you broken down long-term uh, five-year, 10-year succession plans from within? Or are we just going to kind of take it day by day? Because whether it's a consolidation, simplification, merge, whatever you want to call it, You've got to build that piece into it, and uh, yeah, no, absolutely. You have to you have to have a succession plan in place, and, and um, a lot of this is is common sense. So if I wish I had only five years, I've got I'm more in the seven year range. But but uh -huh. if I were to win the lottery or something like that, then I'm out of here tomorrow. Um, you know, Matt would would step up, and he certainly acts as a deputy Correct. chief, and and we would move him up. Um, I mean, the, the, the directors could always say, no, we want to do a national search, just like you did for me, and that's fine. Um, but, but he's certainly capable of doing that. 
Um, we know Dina is probably closer to retiring, at least that she claims to be. I don't know if we'll let her, but she claims she's going to. Um, and we'd be thinking about, OK, well, let's if we let's bring in somebody that can attempt to replace her. We know that's not possible, but, but to attempt to to try and do something like that. So, um, yeah, so it's it's tough. And then at, at more the lower officer level, um, we do we have we have our uh, officers in place now, captains and lieutenants. Uh, we have a lot of acting officers, so they get a lot of in-seat time, AIC time, or acting in capacity as an officer. So um, we are set for, for that. And, and really, you even go down to the paramedic and, and firefighter level. We have great part-time programs. Another thing that, that Matt has to schedule is the part-timers. And, uh, and that's generally where we, we pick our, our new employees or from our part-time pools our sure. volunteer pools. Um, but yeah, so we have, we have succession planned at each, each, each stage. Of course, uh, you never want anybody to leave, but I think we're, we're, we're good there, but it would be nice to have more development opportunities. Well, uh, and for, for people. Chief, Chief, everybody gets there to a certain point to where it is time to move on, which brings me to uh, Dina and the admin piece, which is a very important part of this entire operation on both sides. Uh, how is she with her folks? Has there been a workload analysis to uh, determine what additional admin support is necessary? No, absolutely. We have, and that's where it's good. We have a, a great group and we did increase. Uh, we had, I remember Laura was part-time. We moved her up to full-time. And then one of the things that, that I was very adamant when I first got here is that there has to be a lot of backup. And Dean has been very working absolutely. very hard to make sure everybody's job <laughs> They've written down what they need to do, how they do it, and that somebody else is trained in that. So uh, we have a lot of, of cross-trained individuals and then um, and, and they can do. So I think we're probably at the max now of what we can handle. I'll get you a second, Director Burns. We're at the max now, I think, of what, what they can handle. We probably go above the max during budget time because of the three right. budgets. Um, but we're so fortunate to have great people that, that we get through that. Well, from what I've been reading and seeing and knowing um, the aspects of emergency services, you guys are doing a great job. There's no doubt about it, though, that we are at the point where it needs to move in a more positive direction for simplification of delivery of those services, as well as behind the scenes. So if, and I'm just going to, you know, throw this out there, we look towards the next step of, I'll call it step one, a consolidation. You bring everybody in and it's under welfare. I'm not saying yes, I'm not saying no, I'm just gonna put this out there. If those wheels turn and you develop that work plan, are you taking into consideration what will occur within a three to five year span? Because the boards are gonna change, we all know that. Uh, some of us will run again, some probably won't, but the history is gonna be lost. So in getting set for that next step, we know that the people can deliver the service day to day. We've seen it, you guys are great, but it's that admin piece that I'm really concerned about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. It, it, I agree with you 100%. I've asked Dina to give me at least a year's heads up so we can bring somebody in here. Um, she works at with her HR. Um, she provides HR for us as well as finance. And while her staff is, is awesome, I don't think they're at that level that we need for somebody to run those programs. So we would most likely be bringing somebody in from outside um, I would like them to go through at least a budget cycle with us. Um, I don't know if we would get anybody with fire or EMS board experience or working with boards. We would certainly want that, but definitely I would like a, probably a year to bring somebody in here so they could learn the ropes. And so in tonight's discussions, you bring up the history of before when the city of Florence and the fire protection district came together as one, right? Correct. And 
which was a smart move and a good move because look where you're at today and you're still building it. We, and I've said this before, we're all alone. There's nobody out here that's going to give us the support we need for the level of service we are providing today. So I, I believe, and I truly believe that the current boards are in line with going to that next step. And I'm not going to speak for them. I'm only speaking for myself. I don't believe in wasting time. I believe in going and going now. So I'll, I'll let you finish up your presentation and then I'm sure you're going to open it up to uh, each director. The director uh, Mendolia also has his hand up. All right. Uh, I think I'm just going to echo a lot of what you just heard, but I want to say it anyway. Um, I've watched a lot of uh, institutions that are very similar to this one. I'm fairly new to this, so I'm just kind of drawing on past experiences where you have two to three key people who seem to have the ability to wear multiple hats and to pull off things that probably most people won't pull off. When we're talking about this merger, we're talking, you've said that, well, for Dina and Matt, this is going to relieve a lot of burden. I guess my my question my my thought goes to well is it going to relieve enough that when dina and matt are done someday with this and they move on and the next person comes in is that are those realistic expectations or are dina and matt they appear to me to be kind of those unicorn and you know people who can just kind of just pull off what a lot of people can't pull off and when you lose them and they move on you end up finding out really quickly well how special they were and how able they were to do a lot of tasks a lot of random tasks and go in a bunch of different directions and most people can't do that when we're merging and this is kind of the echo part are we setting those positions up for success for people who maybe maybe are not adina and Matt? how likely are we to find someone who can do what apparently we've asked them to do for quite some time now so i think if we're going to merge and we're saying okay well this is going to maintain costs or cut costs Okay, great. But if we have people who are doing things that are not traditionally reasonable to ask people to do, is that a realistic expectation? Are we setting those positions up realistically when we st stick both entities together? And so that's kind of, I've seen people who are like a Dean and a Matt leave, and then it's really, really difficult to find someone else to fill those shoes. So that's kind of, as we're talking about this and we've talked about how this is going to help Dean and Matt. Is it really like, have we done an analysis? Is it really going to help to the point where if they need to leave tomorrow that we could plug someone in realistically, or if they're going to leave in six months, we can plug someone in realistically, or are those unrealistic expectations just because they're rock stars and they can do all these different things that apparently they've been asked to do. Yeah, Tim, Tim, you're absolutely correct. And then you've just you've just called out my two worst nightmares that one of one of them leaves. And and it is a matter of, yeah, I have two very special people working for me. Uh, we are working very, very hard to create that that support, that backup. Um, and I think if I can talk to, to Matt's side, so if we have so we have captain, very senior captains on the ambulance side. Could they provide that leadership to the fireside and take some of that burden off of Matt? Absolutely. And I think that's what we would look for. I don't know if we would have um, a shift commander or a battalion chief if we need to add you know, senior leadership to each shift where we use what we have. And I think we do have senior people and they can, they can do a lot of that. Um, and then with Nina, I think, yeah, she's, she's been asked to to be HR manager, she's been asked to be a finance manager, and that's typical for um, fire districts our size. I think when you add um, Western Lane Ambulance into it, yeah, we're typically, I think we're at the size where you would have two people. And that's where we may have to look at having an HR director and having a finance manager as two different people. And I think that's, that's something we would have to talk about if, um, you know, if Dina does give me that year's notice, I, I would really think about splitting her position into two people. And certainly if she would decide that she's retiring tomorrow, I would say there's no way that we're going to find somebody with that experience. Most likely we'd have to have two people. So I think you're right. I think we've been blessed with people that can do two jobs. 
And again, it was, it worked out perfectly because we were just trying out this move, just sharing admin um, instead. And then we lost our, we had a, another um, fire ops chief who left uh, a year ago, February or um, year before in February. And, um, and rather than replacing that, because we didn't know what, what the future of Wolfia was going to be, uh, Matt stepped in and he's done a great job. So I think, yeah, um, you have a good argument. It may take um, two people. I think with Matt, we could maybe get away with senior um, officers, on one on each ship to represent fire and EMS. And Dina, I think we'll have to look very closely unless there was one person that uh, could replace her abilities. Um, if we could steal somebody from another fire EMS district, we would certainly try that. But uh, it, it may require, I think we're at the size now that we have to look seriously at two, two people. Yep. So Director Burns, you, you were waving your hand. I don't know if you had a comment. I, I don't know how to. I, oh, Raise your I'm hand. Muted. Waves okay. Now you're muted. Nope. Now you're, now you you're muted. muted yourself. <laughs> okay. Now I don't know here. how to put a hand up, but I'm fine. But Chief House, I have a question. If I understood correctly, you have uh, people to like mechanics are servicing the vehicles, uh, two for either one for the district, uh, for the ambulance district, one for the fire district. Is that correct? Yeah, that's not just for servicing the medic units and engines. It really goes all the way down the line. Uh, one agency orders some supplies from one vendor, one supplies from another vendor. The only thing that's really consistent is our where we order our medical supplies from mm -hmm. because it's an easy enough to do. And it's all set up through Western Lane and in my knowledge of the EMS that we can just simply put the fire side with it and order off of Western Lane's account. Are we under contract to use two separate vendors? No, and this is one of the things I am working on with okay. uh, an employee is to, um, one of the captains on Western Lane side, his responsibility is vehicle maintenance and building maintenance, but he also has people below him that he works with, is gotcha. directing them to find one commonality. So working with Captain Gray and Captain Pearson, them two working together for one commonality, but it would make it easier if we were yeah. you know, this direction. Yeah, I, I kind of, I got that on your presentation, sir, at the very beginning and kind of thought it was strange that, um, you know, working towards, I do believe it would help you if you just had to have, worry about one set of invoices. So it, 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 this also goes back to Mandola's, Director Mandola's points was, mm -hmm. this is also succession building at the same time, you know, we're yeah. building within the district. My goal is handing this off to the next person in a nice little bow wrap so he doesn't have to do what I dealt with for the last three. Well, actually, I would say the last five years, whenever Henry passed away, yeah. that we've been looking for some common stabilization with the organizations. When Henry passed away, we had chaos because we lost our district man or our business manager as well. That's what actually created us coming together and working through this and having the joint services. Oh. You know, now I think over the last two years we finally got to some stabilization with it now it's time to move forward with it so we can actually push this a direction at the end of the day when we're done with our careers we can't hand this off to a nice person and it's no. easy for them to do no i understand and i totally agree with you that this you've inherited this and you want to pass it off in a one easy simple package to who takes over from you and the comments uh, Director Thank Russell. You, Chief. Thank you, Director Russell. Um, my understanding is the whole idea behind this workshop and everything is that we're going to be looking at the possibility of what it's going to look like streamlining. To me, going into the streamlining phase of this first step of putting us together um, is going to, I think, bring to light a better look, bring it everyone's job into a better light. So you can write a reasonable job description and also decide, is it possible for one person? We've just been putting caulk into the bat into the cracks at this point. Now it's time to actually build a decent building and a decent house by taking this next step and seeing what do we really need and can we maintain this I know we can maintain the services, but at what cost? Um, 
not that I don't think it's I don't think it's going to go up. I think it's actually going to go down or st stabilize itself. Um, but it just seems like that's the logical thing to do at this point. That's my personal opinion mm -hmm. is to streamline this and then we can have a better view of exactly once Matt and Dina and you are working for one agency rather than multiple, how your job are going at that point. We don't know until we do it. So can yeah. I touch on that Good real point. quick, Chief? Yeah. Uh, so when you talk about streamline, we're, we're not even... I would say 25% of where we should be when we talk about cross-trained working together. And yet we're already doing a great job with it. Um, I, I hit on it earlier, you know, we have medical fire engines arriving on scene first, initiate an EMS care for the patient, which is the number one goal is really high quality care. An example, last night we had a chest pain, um, engine arrived on scene first, did a 12 lead, got a complete set of vital signs, passed it off, and it was 100% accurate. Three years ago, would have never heard of that in this area. Flip side, Dairy Queen catches on fire. We had EMS guys actually draw, you know, pull on a hydrant. So we're like, like I would say 25% way there in operations, but we can't fully get there until we say, okay, now let's streamline this and do this and make it more efficient at well oiled machine. On the same hand, also, Matt, what you brought up at the last board meeting where there you had two. Uh, paramedics out on extended leaves and you were able to pull from the fire department some uh, backup for yourself. And <laughs> three years ago, you wouldn't have been able to do that. Well, it, this isn't just like a, a turn of the switch. This is something that the board directed Western Lane uh, uh, about four or five years ago, excuse me if I'm wrong on the timeline, is we need to develop our farm league. And we did, we've done a great job developing our farm league. And I've had the same mentality as I came over to the fire side is like, we need to develop our farm league. We are here by ourselves on an island that we need to be self-sufficient to that 90% call volume. That 10% call volume is always going to be the surge events that you can't plan for. It's just going to happen. And you take the blows as the best you can and making sure you provide the highest level of care you can. Thanks, Matt. Uh, Director Webb, you got your hand up. You're muted. You're still muted, Mike. I feel like Alan Burns. Sorry, Alan. <laughs> Good place kind to be. A, <laughs> kind of a rundown memory lane with all the, the farm leagues discussion. I remember that board meeting well. Um, we had a an employee who wanted to move out of the district um, for personal reasons, and uh, we had a policy that said you must establish residency in the district. It didn't say anything about maintaining residency. Yeah, we still had a board that was split on allowing her to leave because we were concerned about callbacks. We were concerned about backfilling employees when we needed help. Um, there was still no mandate that an employee, whether they lived in the district or out of the district, would come back for callbacks. They're just, we thought, well, if they're there, they're, they're going to come back. Um, so it, when we allowed her to move out, we charged Matt with forming a farm team. And uh, that's where that came from. And the volunteer base and the, the part-timers have grown dramatically. But getting back to the main purpose of this meeting, I, I think we were, a merger is not the word that we want to use because we're not looking at a formal merger. A merger to me is a formal uh, dissolving of the two other districts or the two districts and forming a brand new one or merging into one district. So I think what we're looking at right now is just combining employees under one uh, category to allow for easier management and if we do that under the authority then we can put it under one um, one question i had on that is are they, the employees going to be classified i'm going to go on for a few minutes so you might jot these down but will they be classified as firefighters and under what contract would they be working under um, and if so if, if they're classified as firefighters they become non-binding or binding arbitration with that something that we need to consider. Um, if this doesn't work, how hard is it to unwind if we do put them under one contract? Um, something to also consider. But where we were three years ago, four years ago, five years ago, when Henry Hamm passed away, we were exposed. And we thought we had a district that was gonna be migrating and finding a replacement for Henry, but we never got there. Um, while Henry was still alive. 
And then about two months before he passed away, our lead office person uh, left the district. And Henry was scrambling to cover her job and trying to figure out exactly what was happening within the office when he passed away. That truly exposed just how weak the district was administratively with succession. We had, we had no succession plan in place for that. Um, we were able to cover that with the help of special districts. But funny thing is operationally, we didn't miss a beat. Um, and that's a big thanks to Matt, David Rossi, Derek and uh, Danielle when they were supervising. I think Ronnie Pearson might've been involved in that as well. But uh, the employees continued to keep the wheel turning down the road. But succession was wide open. And we went out for two years trying to find a manager for the district. We could not find a manager who was willing to take the job that had the qualifications that we needed to help us grow and to stay as an independent district. That Western Lane always wanted to stay independent. We just, we couldn't find the staff to do it. Um, we had no backups. Um, so really, we're getting down to this. The main question is, how do we improve the service for our district? How do we make better use of the people with both districts to help the people or taxpayers? And to me, finding a way to efficiently coordinate all the employees, perhaps under one head, is something well worth considering. And if this works, uh, perhaps a formal merger is in the wings. But a formal merger, to me, is this is the first step to consider whether that's gonna work or I, let's say it's, this is the next step to consider whether that's gonna work. The IGA was the first step. Um, and if it doesn't work, I just wanna know how hard it would be to unwind. So, that's it. Good, yeah, uh, good questions, Mike. Yeah, reversal is, so we say we moved everybody, all operations to um, Wealthia, so that both districts still exist. Both would still be in place. So I'm not saying that it would be a piece of cake to do that. You would have to say, okay, we're moving people back. And state law is very clear that if you get rid of the authority, you must go back to your old employer. So that's, that's specified in state law. So they have to do that. So there would have to be a plan in place. And I think it'd be just a matter of, okay, we would separate payroll, we'd separate scheduling, we'd separ separate um, HR, everything. And, and just move them back to, I mean, they wouldn't be moving geographical locations. We'd still be running an ambulance out of, you know, um, down at the hospital, fire mostly up here, although we might have some, you know, an ambulance up here at the fire station. Uh, but reversal, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a piece of cake, but it wouldn't be difficult. And there's, there's laws in place, say how you do it. So, so we could definitely do that. One contract, absolutely. I think if, if we did move everybody to operations, our desire would be to have one contract. We're coming up at the expiration date of our current contract, so this would be the perfect time to do that. Um, again, it would have to be, you know, the union would have to agree to a new contract as well as directors from, from both boards would have to agree to, to a new contract. So this is the time to do it. What would be easy is that we, have, we don't have overlapping job descriptions. So we have a paramedic and EMT down at Western Lane Ambulance District we have a firefighter, a firefighter engineer. We just added firefighter paramedic and then uh, officer position, lieutenant or captain up here uh, at, at the fire department. So none of those are overlapping. So you would just merge those where you'd have, you know, you just combine uh, those two. Uh, it would be nice to have a similar wage uh, scale, um, including both districts, again, which have to be approved by the boards and uh, the union, but um, I mean, you can, you can draw equivalency. What's, uh, is a firefighter engineer, is that equivalent to an EMT down at Western Lane Ambulance District? So should they be paid the same or do you get more for uh, a firefighter certification? And I've got all that in, in uh, a spreadsheet and, and just waiting to present it to the board. I think around, once we get to negotiation time, that would be a great time to bring it to the board. So I think that's not difficult as well as having job descriptions. And then as far as um, binding arbitration, yeah, if firefighters uh, do have uh, binding arbitration, um, whereas currently Western Lane Ambulance District personnel uh, do not. 
Um, um, is that an issue? Well, it's just, that's just what it is. Um, I think that, um, you know, who, who knows what the, the district's gonna look like in five years? Who knows what the union's gonna look like in five years? So I think we have a good working relationship now. Um, I hope that would continue. I think it would continue, but yeah, it's, um, I don't see a lot of issues there other than the, the normal issues you get with negotiations. So all good questions, Mike. Wouldn't the union already be aware of the binding arbitration versus no binding arbitration at this point with the two contracts and yet they're still saying they're 100% behind us moving forward? So binding arbitration would benefit them. I mean, if they don't like the contract, then we have to go to binding, binding arbitration, which again, that's not something that I would be concerned about. I think if we give a fair offer, if we can back up what our offer is, then, then we have a likely chance of, of winning and binding arbitration. Um, no, the, but they are aware of it. Yeah, absolutely. Any other questions for operations? I was gonna turn it over to Dina to say a few words about finances. Well, finances, administration, human resources, IT, there's a lot of things that uh, I oversee. So um, I did type up a, a page and a half of, of just notes for um, you know, what, what it would take to do a, uh, a streamline, and I love that word, um, effective July 1, 2022. Uh, we've already talked about the, the one contract, the um, collective bargaining agreement, which would be great to have the same policies for, for everyone, you know, um, the represented people. Um, payroll is a big one. Um, we would be uh, bringing people out from SVFR and Western Lane into Wealthia, which we already have. The nice thing really is we've already got Wealthia set up. That was huge, you know, October of 2019, getting bank accounts set up, um, state business, you know, uh, uh, federal employee identification number, business, state numbers. So, well, FIA is set up. So it's so a lot of the um, the work involved is is done, but there would be a lot of work to do. Um, you know, we would be, you know, like on the payroll deductions, the, to have everybody under the same medical insurance would be big. Right now, I've got insurance policies for, um, you know, uh, health insurance, the health dental and, and vision and all that, and life insurance. We've got um, accident and health policies for all three districts. We've got accidental death and dismemberment <laughs> policies property casualty. So, I mean, probably I've got maybe 12 to 14 different insurance policies between the three entities. And a lot of them have different processes. They've got, um, you know, different, different ways of reporting. So when renewals come up, I've just got this, you know, on my desk full. So to, to consolidate or to streamline would, would really um, make things so much easier uh, for a, a more of a set way of doing things instead of, you know, saying, okay, now this one's up for renewal. What do I do on this one? I got to go back and check my notes. Does it go this way or that way? But in, you know, in addition to, um, you know, payroll, there's, there's PERS. We've already got the Wolfia PERS set up. So it would be, you know, moving people uh, from, from one PERS over to, to the other. Um, I already talked about insurance policies. Uh, the accounting and financial end of things, um, we would still continue to have the three budgets. Of course, Wolfia would have all of the expenses of, of uh, doing operations for all three. Um, and Western Lane and Sayusla Valley would continue to have um, the budgets for the income purposes with, with one expense line going out um, to, to pay for the Wolfia expenses. Um, you know, we've got a lot of bank accounts. We've got all these um, savings accounts, PERS, uh, is, you know, set aside for, for PERS. We've got uh, lots, lots of savings accounts, capital improvement accounts, checking accounts, LifeMed accounts. 
I think we could, you know, right now, I think we've got 11 bank accounts that could easily become five. I mean, you, you wouldn't get down to one or two, obviously, because you still want to have your savings accounts and your reserves for what you need, but um, you'd have a lot less. Um, for, you know, we'd have to bring all the MasterCard accounts under one roof, everybody who's got a credit card, you know, and it would be one statement instead of reconciling three statements. Um, we've got grants, programs, contracts out there, which, you know, a lot of contracts, contracts that both entities have with the same uh, company would become one contract instead of two or three. And, uh, you know, IT, you know, we would have, um, you know, one server instead of two servers, we would have everybody on the same email program. So there's just a lot of things um, that, that would just become better, I, just the way of one way of doing things instead of three different ways of doing things. I did uh, jot down a couple of notes um, as I was listening to people uh, talk. Um, you know, Director Mendolia made a good point um, and I wanted to say something about this. You know, there will be some cost savings. There will be um, some elimination of duplicate uh, expenses, but we're still going to have, you know, 83 employees. We're still going to have um, a lot, you know, most of our vendors. It's just that we, we may not get two invoices from the same vendor. We would get one invoice. So I think it would just it would just bring things more together. Another example is like our workers comp policies. Right now, Western Lane Ambulance is with SAFE and uh, Wolfia and Sayusla Valley are with SDAO. So when these renewals come up, I have two different, again, two different ways of, of, of doing the reporting. This would become one way. We would merge everything over into special districts and have have one way of reporting on these, these renewals that come up. Um, I think, you know, uh, another thing I wanted to point out, uh, Director Polisi said this once upon a time and it was, it kind of made a real impact with me. Uh, we'd be stronger as one for getting grants, you know, for federal grants. And I think, you know, that's something that uh, the board needs to kind of take into consideration. Um, our policies, we've just gotten done with Lexipol, and we're not done with Lexipol. Lexipol is still a work in progress, but you know, the having one set of policies for everyone is huge. I mean, when you've got a different policy for this company and a different policy for that company, and you're trying to remember which policy is, is what, for example, like the work weeks, the pay weeks for Western Lane is Sunday through Saturday. The pay weeks for Sayusla Valley and Wolfia are Monday through Sunday. So when we're doing payroll, we got to remember these different things. So I'm, I'm kind of, I know I'm kind of jumping around and, and uh, maybe not, you know, following a very, very smooth presentation here, but it just gives you an idea of, of you know, what's going on and how I really think that, um, you know, we would be able to um, better utilize uh, equipment and resources and, and try to uh, eliminate some duplication of overhead expenses and streamline things. Questions? Mike, Director yeah, Webb. Just briefly, uh, just to explain a little bit why there's a difference in grant preference between a health district and a fire district and walk us through that just a hair. Well, Director Polisi, you've got some experience with that, um, with, with the federal grants. Yeah, hello, I just had to unmute myself. Yeah, Mike, how it works is a lot of these uh, federal fire grants come through US Fire Service Administration, and then they're broken down into needs and assessments of services desired. So when, like the chief mentioned before, majority of EMS delivery services fire-based when you see these grants come through, they're gearing towards an all risk assessment of what the agency needs. For example, and I'm just gonna throw this out there. A fire district needs a fast response 
EMS fire capability, all rescue service squad. Okay, well, there are many builders out there and they prepare a piece of apparatus that is capable of that first response EMS fire rescue capability minus the uh, patient transport. And that rig is designed in accordance with NFPA standards. And when grants are developed, they're specifically set up for whatever those current needs are. So when you see something that comes through that says, hey, uh, US Fire Administration will be accepting grants for you know, uh, all risk wildland fire service vehicles. Okay, departments like us in Colorado, California, Texas, wherever, they look at that and they say, oh, great. Yeah, we can apply for that grant. It's a 9010 grant and we go for it and we apply, we fill out everything and we're accepted. I don't see very many EMS-based grants only, to answer your question. I don't see grants that go out there for EMS transport vehicles only. And correct me if I'm wrong, maybe Chief House knows something better than I do, but I've always seen to see these grants come through as a first responder quack, uh, quick action vehicle minus the transport capability. So unless I, and, and I don't know if I answered your question correctly, but just, I would say 90% of those grants are for an all risk first responder vehicle. And that gives us a better opportunity of, of getting one. Actually, we have a grant in right now, don't we chief Matt for a type three engine that can be a rescue? On the fire side and then for monitors on, on the EMS side. Yeah, this, yeah. this has been for, for 20 years since 9-11. Since it's been very, very fire centric on monies from, from federal government and um, EMS, EMS only agencies have really been forgotten about. And it's, it's a shame. That's why you hear about all these small agencies in, in the Midwest and rural areas. There's just no money, no support for them. And, and they're closing, which is sad, but uh, um, I, I hate to say I've taken a lot of advantage of, of this fire centric grant that, that's that have been available, but um, yeah, it's only been for fire departments. And if you do fire based EMS, yeah, you just you just a step up above everybody else. And adding it to it, most of the times when you're talking about grants to like the health district, it gets confused to the for profit areas, and they don't give grants for profit areas the majority because they're for profit. They're trying to make their money, so if they're getting grant, there's no really need for it. I mean, the majority of the times that Western Lane has applied for grants, it has been a confusion that we're a for-profit ambulance district versus a third service. Yeah, I just wanted to briefly go back real quick to, to a comment you made, Mike, uh, Director Webb. Yeah, we're, we're definitely not asking the directors to consider a merger this year or even next year. This, we're just looking for streamlining, combining operations really completing what the authority was formed for. You, you put an authority in place to run operations and admin for two, two or more districts. And, and we sort of stopped halfway. Um, and I understand why that was done. People were very cautious, but I think now, yeah, we're just saying, let's complete the purpose of the authority, make sure it's gonna work. And then down the road, we would, would do a, a merger if that's, if that's what is desired. So let me... Uh... So, and I've shown you this timeline before, and we are working where we can to streamline. Um, a lot of it, we just can't unless we're one agency, but uh, uh, we've moved the fire marshal to Wealthia. We've got a joint policy manual now. Um, one scheduling system. Well, we can't do that unless we're one agency because it's sharing resources. Uh, prepare for the, the levy renewal, we're doing that. Uh, develop and approve a joint strategic plan. I know there's there's some that feel that maybe, well, let's do the strategic plan first and then talk about streamlining. But we see it as, no, the strategic plan is going to tell us how to do what we need to do, whether it's to have separate agencies, whether it's to streamline, whether down the road is to merge. That's what you have a strategic plan. 
that's the plan that you're going to use for the future. So that's why I look at every year when I'm preparing the budget, what did we say we wanted to do in the strategic plan? So we really think that we need to come, the directors need to come up with a decision so we can drive the strategic planning process. Cross training we're doing, and like Matt said, that's been really successful. Uh, facility analysis, we're not ready to do that yet, but, but it, it could. Uh, begin discussions on similar identical collective bargaining agreements. Absolutely, I think we've got a, um, a framework in mind. I think the union, both sides, Western Lane and SVFR, would be willing to do that. Uh, I'm not saying it's gonna be easy discussions, but I, I think um, they're ready to do that. We talked about combined wage ranges, um, getting ready people. And this is just to get ready to streamline, move everybody into, into operations, which is the second, what I call phase two. So all Western Lane SVR employees and volunteers move to Volpia. And then we have other things that we would have to do. Um, make sure we have one collective bargaining agreement, get to where we can do the mixed staffing. Um, and Chief House was talking a little bit about that. Um, if we have to remodel any stations, then we'll have to start putting some capital funds away so we can remodel stations if we want 24-7 staffing of fire and EMS personnel at some of our outlying stations. Uh, I think this would help Matt a lot is to have a, a training division chief or a chief level officer to do that. Uh, if this, so this phase two, once we move everybody to Wolfia, that could last indefinitely. I mean, at some point, we probably go to the board, maybe a future board, maybe a future chief, say, hey, it's time to merge and we could do that. Uh, if they don't, then of course, there'd be another levy renewal, 2026, every five years, you have to go with a local option levy. Um, and then um, if we move forward to, if they ever get to a point where they wanna do a merger again, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time because that's way in the future, but there is a lot of um, uh, laws that have to be followed. A merger or consolidation has to be voter approved. Um, they have to say yes, dissolve the fire district. They have to say yes, dissolve the health district. And they would have to say yes, establish a new emergency response district. Each of those have to pass. One of those fails and the whole thing fails. So um, all the, the voters would have to definitely be highly involved in this. And then of course, establish the, the tax zones at whatever level uh, directors want to be. I mean, Director could say, well, $2.31, let's go lower. And you certainly could do that as directors. That's your right um, and your obligation to consider that. Um, my recommendation, though, let's keep it where it is now. And you can always set a yearly, every year you can set a lower rate if you want. Um, you just can never go higher if you start lower, if you have a, if you set a lower rate. So yeah, if you say, let's, let's set the permanent rate at $2.21, yeah, you, you can never go back to $2.31. But if you set it at 231 each year, you can say, we've got more than enough funds. This year is going to be $2.21. And that's, that's something directors can do. OK, options. And this is, I put this quote. This is a quote, um, Chief House. He, every once in a while, he says something very profound. And, and this is one. It says, we have, right now, we have an opportunity to make this district great. And he's talking about Walthia and, and combining. I mean, taking the greatness of SCFR, the greatness from Western Lane, and putting them together and making it really one great district. So the options, and again, we're not making a decision tonight. Um, you can't do that. Um, we can go back to separate districts under separate administrations. Um, I would, I'd hate to see that because things are working well now and, and we can see a bright future, but that's certainly an option. Continue with the administration under the IGA as it is now, that's, that's not a good option in our mind in, in that um, there's just, and like you've heard from Matt and Dina, there's just so many things that makes it, this makes life very difficult for us to, to run both agencies when they're separate. Uh, third option, which is what we're recommending is move operations into the authority, July 1, 2022. And we just picked the start of the fiscal year. It's just cleaner that way. Uh, followed by a merger consolidation of the districts. Again, those are two separate questions. You, you couldn't approve both right now. You can only do, or tonight you can't do anything, but at a board meeting, you would just say move operations in the authority. Whatever district is in is present at in 2025 or, or later, they would have to vote on whether or not to, to, to merge or consolidate the districts. So direct, we've had some great discussion, um, great questions. 
Um, what else? What else can we talk about along this? Director Burns. Thank you. I had a question, Dina, earlier under finances. I know it was discussed at one time. At the end of a month, well, FIA is paid, let's say, um, $75,000 in checks. How is it going to be hard for you to divide whether how much is that the ambulance district? How much is that is fire department? Because it was discussed as far as um, at one time, you finding a way to allocate the funds that are legitimately the other person when it comes to staffing and all this. Well, what, that's what I'm doing now. I mean, you, okay. you still, I mean, you, you still have Saisa Valley's financials and Western Lanes financials and, and Wolfia. And um, in the event we do consolidate and bring everyone under Wolfia, I don't think I can really keep things separate at that point. I can, I can sort of do it with the personnel, with the wages. I can kind of group people and we can kind of look at the medics and the, and the fire medics and the, I can categorize things. But when it gets into the day-to-day -day expenses, no way. I, there's no way. I mean, that would be like you know, you've got a bowl of apples and a, and, and a bowl of oranges, and now you've put them into one bowl. Now you have a bowl of fruit. I can't, I can't, I can't keep track of the apples and oranges, how many they are, are in the same bowl. So I, it, we would, it would have to be, uh, at least as far as I know, it, we, it might be able to be done with a different accounting system. I mean, I know there's a lot more robust accounting systems out there, but with the accounting system we currently have, it would be very difficult to keep things separate. Because I was thinking, just as you said, staffing would probably be number one. Uh, you have, for an example, utility bills that are assigned to your building, signed to that. So that can clarify, you know, just by what's on the bill from the, the company. But I, I was just curious, because I remember a discussion the last time when we met in um, in the boardroom to maybe the last Zoom meeting that it was brought up about how are we going to commingle the funds and put them equal to this, equal to that, their fair share. I, I really think that would be, a, yeah, I remember that discussion. I think that would be a step backwards. I mean, if we, if we have, if we put an ambulance up here at the fire station, does that mean that we have to charge them for utilities they use? I, and I, I, and if, if, if Matt buys a box of gloves, you know, do we charge? Sure. Well, SFR uses 20 of those gloves. Western Land uses 30. So it would no, be I don't think anybody difficult. chief yeah. is getting to going to pardon the pun nitpick on that. But just as you said, that was brought up in discussion the last absolutely. one or two times ago. Yeah, absolutely. I think we would recommend against that. We'd certainly make it work if the board... Boards wanted to do that. No one is suggesting to do it. I just, it was a discussion, as you said, we talked about. Yeah, good point. Good point. Director Thank Murphy. You, Dina. Well, I, I kind of tend to disagree. We are going to have to track things better than we are now. If we move all of our employees to WAFIA and we keep doing our budgeting process the way we are, and you want Western Lane Ambulance and Sayuslav Valley to each pay 50% of WOFIA cost, why should Sayuslav Valley fire? Western Lane Ambulance will have a lot more employees in WOFIA than Sayuslav Fire will. No, so, no, no, think, think that's true. No, it would be, so you wouldn't be splitting 50-50 at this point. You'd all be in, in one, one pot. So if our, uh, if I our... understand that chief, but the taxpayers are not going to because Sayushla Valley fire is going to be paying for a lot more employees than they are now. Western Lane Ambulance is going to be paying for a lot more apparatuses than we are now. No, I, I disagree. I disagree, John, because right now you look at the budgets. So SCFR has a budget, we'll, we'll just say $3 million. And they're, they're paying their firefighters, they're paying for fuel, they're paying for utilities. That would continue, they'd be paying $3 million for that. 
Um, Western Lane, $5 million budget. They're paying for personnel. They're paying for utilities. They're paying for, for fuel. Um, that wouldn't change. It would just be you would have one budget, one line item revenue. All the revenue from Western Lane would come. All the revenue from SCFR would come. Would pay for paramedics. Would pay for firefighters. They're paying for the same people. It's just in one budget line. So you'd have a total revenue from both sides. And it has to be approved by both both agencies, both uh, budget committees have to approve the budget. So that, that makes that a little bit more complicated, but it's not that SVFR would be paying half and then they keep half their budget back for, for no employees and no cost. I mean, all the revenue is going into one pot. I, I understand that, but how are you gonna be accountable to Western Lane Ambulance District's taxpayers to where their money is going. So, but they get they're getting the the same level of service or even better for the same cost. So, I guess I I, I don't think that's that's going to be a, an issue. I mean, there we have the same number of medics, we have the same number of ambulances, if not more. Actually, we got more medics. Um, the same revenue is being used to provide the same level of service. So I, I don't, I understand what you're saying, John, but I don't think it's gonna be an issue. Okay, but difference being, I've lived in Florence 67 years and how long have a lot of you folks lived here? How many elections have you been through? We've oh, got to educate sure. the heirs of what we're trying to do. Absolutely. He is going. And, and I strongly disagree with all of you on the word streamlining. A general taxpayer, the minute you mention the word streamlining, they're gonna think, oh, we're getting rid of some equipment, we're cutting employees, where is my cost savings? No, we're actually streamlining in the operations process. So I don't think we wanna use that word in any of our documentation <laughs> public because we're not streamlining any service to the public. John, we've been trying to come up with a, a term for it. <laughs> uh, we came up with the term one time, expansion, expansion of the IGA. Yeah, I think expansion is, is, is good as well. Um, yeah, I think streamlining in that we're sharing resources, maybe resources we don't have to add to one side or the other. But, but we have to explain what we're doing in our verbiage. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that would be, um, if certainly if we ever got to talking about merger or consolidation, I mean, you have to educate the public because they have to vote on it. Um, so so that's, that's a given. But I think completing the authority, I mean, that's the decision of the board, forming the authority, and, and the duties and role of the authority, that's the decision of the boards as well. So I think- I'm not saying that's not the right thing to do. We just have to right. be careful how we go about it. No, no, I, I, I agree. And, I agree. And, and I believe there has to be some kind of track, tracking on at least a quarterly basis what WAFIA is billing the ambulance district and the fire department for. We have to be able to document what monies of Western Lane Ambulance and the fire department have went into WAFIA. We, we, we just can't give you a lump sunny sum of money and let you spend it. But it would be, it's to, it's on an approved budget. So it'd be like taking your budget right now, Western Lane Ambulance District budget, and say, West, well, Fia, you handle this Western Lane Ambulance District budget. That's, that's what we're doing. So well, it would be all the revenue. All the expenses go to Wilfia, all the revenue goes to Wilfia. Uh, Director Webb. I think I can help a little bit. Well, Chief, why don't you just show us what the budgets would look like and what the accounting would look like before in the next meeting. And my vision is you're, you're probably gonna have the existing budgets of Western Lane and, and Sunnyside Valley and the personnel function is shown as paid to Walfia, but I'd like to see it represented so that we can, we can see how the accountability will be when we go forward. Yeah. And then the, the districts can, um, we, we can represent the taxpayers exactly where our tax money is going and Slicelaw Valley can do the same. 
Um, I, I think there's a way to do it. Maybe charge Dina with finding a way that we can show the tracking and how that would work. We already did it. Yeah, we did that. We showed it to you a couple months ago, but we'll we'll bring it back out. Okay. Yeah, well, as long as yeah, as long as we've got it, and then as long as we see where Western Lane dollars are going, I think John's going to be satisfied. And and same thing with the other. And and essentially, like it's just this. it's just a merger of the budgets. I, I I see it. You know, I I I can recognize where you're going, but I think we want something that's straightforward for, so that yeah. the public can look and and recognize and understand it. Um, yeah, I don't have it. I got it, Chief. I'll email it to you. But I like the expansion of the IGA as well. I think that might be cleaner terminology and and more consistent with what we're actually doing. Yeah, uh, I, I concur with John. Although I like the term streamline, I just think it's John's right. I don't. Cindy, did you have your hand up? I did, but I think Mike answered the question because I think what John was trying to make sure is that when we do the budgets, I mean, if we're only, if we're giving you X number of dollars every quarter or once a year or whatever, we have to go back and when we make the next budget, we have to see both fire and ambulance side needs to see, okay, so our, we went over budget on this and under budget on that. So we need to play around with the budget that way and get it so it's more so in I line don't, with the yeah. So I don't know if this is detailed enough for you, but this is, so we've taken the individual, and can everybody see the spreadsheet? It's kind of small, can you blow it up a little? There you go. So like, so for resources, um, so tap networking, I think this is carryover, right? Yeah, yeah. this is carryover. Um, estimated taxes. So we have a combined budget with carryover uh, of 12.8 million. A lot of that's carryover, 5 million that's carryover. And then, um, so I mean, we have, uh, you know, revenue from Three Rivers Casino. We've got two of those um, for each district. And then expenses, so we've just got personnel services. Uh, we got personnel services of 1.29 million for SVFR, 2.7 for Western Lane. Well, fee is a little under a million uh, of total of $4.9 million. I think that's how we would show. So there's no change. So Western Lane revenue is being essentially used to pay for Western Lane resources. It's just not broken down that way. Um, we're not saying, well, we'll write one check to Western Lane, we'll write one check to SVFR people. So they get, it's a wealthy a check, but this is where it's coming from. I don't know if that helps John or Mike. Well, Chief, in our current budgeting process, Western Lane Ambulance, if any question is asked where our money is going, we are able to drill down and present that to any taxpayer that asks us. And we would still have to do that. As you have to be able to do that when it's said and done out of the WAFIA budget somehow. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, I agree. So yeah, we can say, well, last year 2.7 million was used for personnel services. Next year, it's going to be 2.8 or whatever it is, you know, with health, if healthcare goes up or whatever. Um, so we'll still, well, it's going to be difficult to break out. I mean, the, the combined costs, but we can have, we'll, we'll have some. But I agree with you, John. I don't, we'll have to talk more about the best way to educate the public on that, though. Mm. I do agree that we have to educate the public. Well, and it's also the auditors we have to answer to. I don't, yeah, I don't, I mean, again, I, I go back to, and I'll call up LFA or, or Pleasant Hill Goshen. I mean, did you guys run into this problem? How did you do it? And, and I mean, it's, it's very common to do a but, form of but, authority. But they combined people. their budget right off the get-go, didn't they? We're, we're still gonna have three budgets and we're still gonna have to do three different audits no, I think I think our recommendation is to have is just to have one budget. Can't be you done. Have have three, you have to have three audits, absolutely, but it's going to be very quick. It's just yeah. they had those resources, and then it went to the authority. 
Right. Yeah. Your, your two out of three audits would be minimal and two out of three budgets would be minimal. Your main budget and your main audits are Wolfia. But you, 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 a minimal budget isn't accountable to the taxpayers. Well, but it's a balanced budget. It's got your that, that don't matter. It, they're all budgets always have to be balanced, but we have to be accountable and fiscally responsible to the taxpayers and show them where Western Lane Ambulance money is going. So by looking at this, you can't see that? Or if you only have one WFIA budget, you're not going to have this. No, well, you, you again, you'd have a budget for Western Lane and for Are you, are you going to have a personal services line in there? No, you would have one materials and services line like you do now, like, like the way we are paying for Wealthia currently. You would have one expense line going out to Wealthia to pay for administrative and operational services. I, I understand completely what you're saying, John. Um, I don't agree with it completely, but I do understand what you're saying. And well, yeah, I, it's something I, that I, we can I work on. Agree, Chief. But a taxpayer in Western Lane Ambulance District has the right to know how much of their money is going for employees. All, all Western Lane Ambulance was trying to do was hire a management company to manage our employees and our operations into WFIA. Yeah. Now, it, it's the way you are telling me all of this. It, it's not where I thought we were exactly heading, but we're trying to accomplish the same thing. I just need to be, as an elected board member, I need to be able to be accountable to a taxpayer when they ask me a question. And I agree. I think it's just, it's hard to, when you combine resources, when you combine services, I mean, how do you split? We put, we put a firefighter on an ambulance. Do we have to track hourly and then charge that to Western Lane? I don't know, Chief. Yeah, I think that it's just it's just it defeats the purpose of sharing resources. I think it would be very difficult. I mean, we could we'll sit down and we'll we'll toss some ideas around to see what we can come up with. And I'll talk to other districts too, see if they've okay, they've had that you. issue. It's fair. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, we're not the first ones to do this. So so that's and good. won't be the last. <laughs> but that's good, good point, John. Other questions? We've been here an hour and a half, a little over an hour and a half. Okay, awesome. So I will sit down with the other directors, um, either with or, or before or after they, they, they watch this, and, and, and then we can capture some more questions maybe. I know Sam, Sam Spade did talk to me already about some questions, but um, so good, good, good discussion. I think we're, we're heading in the right direction. Um, I appreciate everybody attending the workshop. And uh, we've got a board meeting coming up in two weeks on the 23rd. Do we need a second workshop a week from tonight? I did um, tentatively schedule one if we needed it. I don't, I don't think so, but I'll leave that up to direct. Anybody want another one? Well, it depends on what you find out, Chief Schick, when you guys brainstorm amongst your staff. OK. Yeah, I don't think we need a second. Um, OK. A second uh, workshop, we'll, we can let you know what we come up with, though. No. Okay. Well, everybody, you, have, everybody. A, have a good night, everybody. Good night.